Hey guys, it's Chris Martin. This is episode nine of the Crane Rental Podcast. Um, I'm standing in front of a beautiful, uh, pardon me, Link Belt Rough Terrain Crane RTC 8030, a 30 ton um, Series 2 Rough Terrain Crane. And last week we talked about kind of what the difference is or why I would rent or buy a uh, crawler crane versus a all-terrain um, hydraulic crane. And today I'm kind of going to go over why you'd, uh, why you'd rent a rough terrain crane and kind of why you'd rent a carry deck. They're both in the same class of crane, kind of. Um, once you see where I go with this thought process, you'll kind of see why, uh, what I mean about that. So the main purpose of a rough terrain crane, as you can see, is these large um, RT tires. We saw the same type of tire on that all-terrain crane last week. If you uh, remember, those are just large tires. Once again, 6.3 comes up almost to my shoulder here uh, in size. These large rough terrain crane tires, RT tires for short perhaps, help this crane get into crazy or uh, situations that your normal truck chassis crane, your TMS, or your HTC crane can't get into. Uh, your crawler crane is really good at getting into those tight spots too uh, because it has tracks and those are really good at gripping. But these RT tires are large so it helps it go through mud, sand, dirt, basically your general construction crane. Uh, you can take it all over your project site and not have the, too many issues uh, getting, you know, stuck or anything like that. These are large tires. Now we also have a Grove RT 9100, 100 ton class uh, rough terrain crane in our fleet. And those tires, like I mentioned last week, uh, almost uh, as tall as me. So you can imagine uh, what kind of weight and, um, and maneuverability on site this crane has. What's really cool and most convenient about a rough terrain crane, uh, as you can see, it's pretty mobile. You see we're sitting on uh, some real ends here. Not the, um, not your standard um, outrigger mat. Normally you use Dica mats, but we're just sitting here kind of uh, washing her down. But what you can do with an RT crane that you can, well, you can do this with other cranes too, but most notably uh, the crawler crane and your rough terrain crane um, have a pick and carry chart. Now your all-terrain crane has a pick and carry chart um, your carry deck also has a pick and carry chart. I don't know that an HTC or a truck mount crane has a pick and carry chart. They may, but it may be highly reduced. But typically your um, RT, your crawler, and your carry deck have these pick and carry charts that are most widely used. You're not really going to take an R, um, a all-terrain crane and pick and carry with it, although the manufacturer does have that uh, available to you. Obviously those charts are highly derated. Um, this crane here has a pick and carry chart and that's what's so great about this. You can go on wheels. It has an on tire chart is what you would call it. So it has an on tire chart where you can uh, get mobile. You can pick up uh, a piece of pipe or maneuver into place, pick up, you know, a compressor, um, small or heavy objects, obviously if it's in chart. You can pick it up and you can mobilize this um, piece all around your job site and I'm doing my hands here because that's the crane moving around obviously be more controlled but you can move uh, with this load um, it actually is driven and operated uh, in your upper cab there's actually a steering wheel in the upper cab uh, that flips up um, so you can operate this crane so it's kind of a lot going on you have the operators cab um, from the lower in an all-terrain crane and the operating cap from the upper in an all-terrain crane, all -terrain crane kind of smashed into one, so it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously you have gas pedals and everything like that, brakes, as well as your swing brake and your extend uh, out. So there's a lot of different controls happening in the operating cab of an RT crane, but this crane is highly mobile. Now, much like the crawler crane is, uh, we talked about last week, it's highly not mobile, highly mobile once you get it on the job, highly not mobile getting it to a job. So this is one of our smaller ones. Actually, I think it's our smallest in our fleet, the RTC 8030, 30-ton 30 link belt uh, Series 2 rough terrain crane. Like I said before, we have uh, you know higher, uh, more capacity RT cranes, 100-ton, and I think uh, even above. So they vary in different uh, crane capacities. 
But what is special about this, much like a crawler crane, is you have to get a large um, heavy haul trailer to get this on site. It's gonna be typically a wide load and a special load to get this crane on site. Um, which, you know, kind of gets into permitting issues, uh, brings more challenges to light, um, more of trucking challenges, where the all-terrain crane, your truck mount cranes, they can just roll to the site, no problem. Um, you know, they bring all the tractor trail loads behind them, um, or they have a chase truck if you're in a truck mounted crane. But these RTs uh, require at least uh, one heavy haul crew. Uh, you can notice the counterweights attached to it. So basically everything on here is ready to roll. You're not gonna have subsequent truckloads uh, based on counterweights or mats or you know lattice boom like a crawler crane would have um, or even a luffing jib like the all-terrain crane. This crane here is basically good to go, ready to roll pending you have permits and pending you have the heavy haul trailer um, ready to go. Typically this crane, much like the crawler we talked about, is bare rented, right? Meaning uh, we would just rent this to a customer or a client for a project with no operator. We do rent these for shutdowns and other projects with operators, of course, but typically you see this crane just bare rent out uh, for one month, two months, or even long-term projects like 10, 12, two years where you never even see the crane. Sometimes we'll get this crane, uh, do a PDI, and then we'll send it straight to a project and won't see it for a few years. That's what this crane's really meant to do, those long-term projects where you're building a refinery, building a building, right? Doing some steel work, building um, basically anything for long durations. And that basically stems from I think a little bit from the fact that it takes so much to transport this thing. You gotta get a heavy haul trailer, uh, maybe a two plus one or uh, a three plus two trailer um, to get this on site, depending on your road uh, regulations, maybe even more. You may need to add a Jeep or anything like that or uh, um, another driving axle that pushes down to get this, where, get this crane where you need to go and uh, have enough uh, axle weights to make it through DOT, checkpoints, etc. But when you get this crane and you need to transport long distance, you know, um, the mobilization cost can be more expensive than let's say all-terrain crane, truck mount crane, um, maybe a carry deck, you know, that may be a little bit less expensive. But when you truck this thing from here to Montana or here to Texas or here to Oklahoma or here to Kansas or here to, you know, insert anywhere, um, it is a costly um, expense to get this on site. So you may see, you know, mobilization charges uh, that are, you know, five, five figures, right, each way. And that's just because of the sheer cost to get this on site is uh, much like a crawler crane. A crawler crane, like I mentioned last week in episode eight, you would deploy that uh, crawler crane asset on site. And typically you would rent that for long durations. Although, like I did mention, you can rent that for short durations. You can rent this for short durations, but it becomes less cost effective than getting a mobile AT crane there. But maybe you need this, uh, you need, maybe you need to pick and carry. You know, uh, adverse uh, site conditions that require these large eight, um, RT, AT tire type stuff. You just don't know. Every project's really different, but this crane really comes to light in those long-term projects where you can, you know, subsidize that mobilization cost over a longer period of time. Uh, this crane is perfect for those long-term jobs and, you know, we talked about last week like having the right crane for the project and this type of crane is going to be suitable for a certain type of project. It's also great for, um, to assist cranes that are already on a project. So a great use for this. RT uh, style crane is we'll use this RT style crane in assembling our, our crawler cranes, our Manitowoc 2250s, our Manitowoc 16,000, uh, or our LeBaire 1300 SX crawler cranes, or you know our PH, not our PH, our Cabelco CK, I don't remember the CK uh, number, 
but this is great for assisting in two crane picks on a wind turbine uh, project or a wind park project, you know, where you have a blade. Uh, frequently we use this for a tail crane where the main all-terrain crane or the main crawler crane will pick up uh, most of the load from the, the rotor. And this crane, when um, the rotor becomes closer to the ground, when we hoist it slowly closer to the ground, this crane will pick up on one of the wind turbine blades and will actually shift that blade like this horizontally set it down on your elephant foot or your other proprietary um, rotor stand, right? That's great for this crane. Um, and it gets subsidized out to the project and it really becomes an asset there. Other ways you can use this, uh, I've seen you can use these RT cranes for um, manufacturing purposes. Say you're building compressors, you can stack two of these cranes up. You can do two crane picks with these RTs, uh, move with the load, or just run around a job site and do multiple projects without having to, you know, get a big AT out, unstack the counterweights, restack the counterweights, you know, unswing a jib, reswing a jib. I mean, you're not doing that with this um, RT crane. You're picking up the load, you're sucking in your outriggers, and you're moving on to um, another part of the project. Great for plant shutdowns where you need to have mobile cranes perhaps moving all around and uh, you don't need to be you don't need to carry large amounts of of weight that you know like an AT crane would need to carry or an RT crane I'm mean, pardon me or a crawler crane so this crane uh, is perfect for those types of applications much like a carry deck is uh, you see the carry decks being used in industrial situations where you need to pick and carry well basically imagine a carry deck just uh, a smaller version of this. This is that dinosaur you get when you kid, when you're a kid and you just add water. When you uh, before we added water, you have a carry deck here, and that carry deck is a smaller version of this. Typically, eighty um, not eighty tons, eight and a half tons. I've never seen an eighty ton carry deck. Uh, pardon me, eight and a half tons or a fifteen ton Broderson or um, one of those types of cranes smaller you'd see that in an industrial factory type sense where you're picking up small engines motors uh, parts moving it through the factory uh, a carry deck obviously is called carry deck because you it has a big long deck much like this rt does where you can set items on it you can pick it up set it on that deck and then drive that crane uh, around your factory or plant and then subsequently pick up that load and, and put it somewhere this rt crane and the carry deck are much like um, the same cranes in the sense that you have to mobilize them to the site. Uh, carry deck's obviously much cheaper. Uh, mobilization, you can get it on a standard tractor trailer setup. You don't have any heavy haul um, situations going, going on there. These are the great cranes um, for, once again, for the right project. This is the perfect crane. You can't go wrong with an RT. But like I mentioned, you're not gonna use this RT in, um, in your daily mobile crane fleet, i.e. your taxi fleet, you're not gonna use this in this. Why? Because you have to load it on a heavy haul trailer, you're carting it around town, it has to get off the trailer, you have to unjib some, um, not unjib, you need to take uh, the Jeep off, roll this back on, get the Jeep back on. You know, so deploying this asset or renting this crane um, for one of your projects does require that heavy haul, pardon me, that heavy haul aspect. So. You're typically gonna see this on long-term projects, much like your crawler crane, like I mentioned earlier. All right, guys, so this is a shorter episode, episode nine, um, just talking about, generally speaking, about the rough terrain cranes, how you get onto site, what kind of projects you'd use it for, what kind of projects we typically see it used on, and that is what we talked about today. So, we'll check us out next week, guys, for episode 10, where we're gonna talk about more about cranes on uh, Crane Rental Podcast number 10 check out the previous episode crane rental podcast number eight or ocho like i said if you're here in the southwest um where we talk about why i would pick and rent or buy an all-terrain crane versus a crawler uh, of the same uh, crane class that was actually sent in to us uh, from our instagram account if you guys have any questions please don't hesitate to email it in info at crane that goes to my email box i answer every question that comes in there um whether it's crane related or crane rental or crane equipment related. We answer all those questions. Actually, I do. 
Uh, you can see us on Instagram, Crane Service Inc. You can DM us there or DM us on Twitter, also Crane Service Inc. Or message us on Facebook, Crane Service Inc. Uh, still the call sign throughout our social. Um, so guys, this is going to be end of episode 9. Email us some questions and we're going to answer them on the show here uh, with me, Chris Martin. We'll see you guys next week for episode 10. See you guys.